All right. So let's talk about some more networking stuff. Here's Scapey. I learned about Scapey from Microsoft. Um, I found, like I mentioned before in the break, I found a vulnerability on Windows machines, an IPv6 vulnerability. And as usual, I wasn't the first one to find it. And I contacted Microsoft. And I would say, you know, there was a time long ago when Microsoft was really miserable about security and we all laughed at them, but they really shaped up. And the Microsoft security team really takes it seriously these days. So when I contacted some people and said, I need, I got a security problem at Microsoft, within two days, they put me in contact with the right people and I got an answer, which is, we don't care, we're not going to fix it, which is not the answer I wanted, but who am I to tell them what to do? At least they didn't like lie to me or anything or that I was able to get through to the right people. And the other thing they told me is, you should try out Scapey. Scapey is awesome. And Scapey really is awesome. Scapey is a Python library that runs. And what it does is it makes it very easy to just design packets. So this is like the other side of Wireshark. Wireshark lets you analyze traffic. Scapey lets you create traffic to do whatever you want. So um, once you get Scapey going, you can just create an IP object, I equals IP. And that will just create an IP object. Let me just do it live. Let's make this good and big and see if I have Scapey. I think I might have to install it on this machine, but that's all right. All right, so it should just be apt get install. Oh, I did it with um, git. All right, fine. Ah, I see, I'm missing some command lines there. It's sudo apt install git, drive git. I do have git. All right, so what I need to do is just git clone this. Okay. That's a, something I should fix. H430 needs to have some extra carriage returns added to it. But anyway, I get clone scapey. And then CD into it. And then sudo not run scapey. That's right, you don't even need to install it. That was the thing I found recently. Okay, sudo just run scapey. You can run it without installing, which is kind of nice. All right. And it has usually some minor error messages, info messages at start, but now I'm in. So I can set I equals IP, and that creates an IP object. And I can see what's in there with display, display. And I should be able to get rid of the colors. Nope, that isn't going to work. I'll highlight it to make it more visible. Um, anyway, the point is this shows me the IP header, IP version 4. It automatically fills in a source and destination of the loop, the loopback address, and it fills in all the other fields like TTL and stuff automatically. So it's created a network object IP. So now I can set the destination i.dst, which it made equal to loopback, and I can make it something like google.com. Then if I display it again, it will automatically add a function that's going to do a, a DNS resolution to find google.com and it changed the source address from 127.0.0.1 to whatever the correct source address is to send data off to the real internet on my system. So it really does take care of a lot of the irritating stuff for you. So now I can make another object that's an ICMP object. And if I look at that one, display, ICMP is a much simpler protocol so the only thing it has, I'll make this big, but I don't know easily how to get the stupid colors out of it. Just a moment. Uh, color themes. Is light better? Oh, light is much better. Good. There we are. So um, this is just an echo request, and there's not much else to it. That's ICMP. So now I've created an IP, IC, and an ICMP packet. I can do a ping with SR1 of I slash IC. This will send and receive one packet at with this IP packet and that ICMP packet inside it. So that is what's called a ping. It sent a ping. It then started listening. It picked up 11 packets on the network adapter and then it found an answer and it shows me the answer. So here's the answer. The server, which is at this address, 64, 233, so on, which is apparently Google, sent to me an ICMP packet of type echo reply. So that's kind of fun. And you can send data. I can put hello. You can send data in an IP packet. And it will echo back from the server. Now this is 
a way to label ICMP traffic. And I don't know how much it's ever used for any actual productive purpose, but in principle, you can put data in an ICMP packet. And this was used by some old tools like Loki to tunnel network traffic over ICMP to get free service at uh, hotspots that charge money years ago and such. It's a, one of the early covert channels. So anyway, you can send and receive data with these. And so there's a flag you can get off my server this way. And um, then you can do UDP just as well. You can make UDP objects, you can control the ports, you can make TCP objects. And this is extremely useful. If you wanna make any exotic attack, test a firewall and so on. Uh, Scapy is very nice. I often go to DEF CON and I find out some new attack and I can quickly create that traffic. One thing I found was fun is if you do mobile devices like iPads and phones, those things are really shrunk down and they bring back old attacks. I think I found that the iPad mini was vulnerable to the land attack or something like that. There are attacks from the 1990s that involve packets with simple problems like the land attack and the fraggle attack and uh, the ping of death. And those things should have gone extinct 20 years ago. But as people bring new Internet of Things devices with tiny network stacks that are copied from really old ones, they keep coming back. And you can create all these strange packet attacks with this packet crafting in Scapy. Right. And this one here is a new one I just heard about a couple days ago on our news, which is a lot of fun, which is SSLH. I never thought of this, but you don't need to have just one service on every port. You can use this thing, SSLH, and it is a multiplexer. It will listen on one port and it will take the traffic and redirect it to other ports. So you install this thing and it will listen on port 443 and it will, if it gets SSH traffic, it'll send it to 22. If it could open VPN, XMPP, TLS, HTTP, one port is all you use to go to all these different places, which is a pretty fun idea. I was thinking of how you can hide behind it. You can hide your traffic, your firewall, your network intrusion system. We'll all see it going on just one port when it's all different kinds of traffic. So I just set it up and you can use it. And so now I put on a web server, so it's just listening on HTTP on port 80, but it is this product, SSLH, listening on 443. So if I go to HTTP at that address on 443, I'm sending unencrypted traffic, which goes over port 443, but it's really just HTTP traffic. Anyway, I, what I thought, the first thing I thought when I heard of this product is what will Nmap make of it? And I made that the flag. When you get this thing going, scan it with Nmap and see what Nmap thinks it is. It's really like several different services all running on the same port. And this seems like that could be useful for a lot of fun tricks. And the last one in this section is one I just learned earlier today in one of the talks at this conference, which is stealing SSH passwords with strace. This is bloody awesome. So here, if I get out of this Python-based scapey tool, I can, uh, let me make sure I didn't leave it running. SS minus pant will show me the network sockets that are running. And if I make this bigger, I'm looking for 2222. See if it'll fit on the screen well enough to answer. Good. It is running. So I'm going to kill this, um, which is 5143. Sudo kill 5143. Okay. Uh-oh, <laughs> that's not good. Um, I may have a problem here. Uh, did I read the wrong one? I tried to kill the one on 2222, which shouldn't have been, oops, I killed the one on 22. Ooh, that's not good. That's the one I was using. Right, well, I'm gonna stop this video while I fix my server and I'll make another video after I get it working. <laughs>